Today we're gonna bust a myth. Yep, just like those guys on TV, but with less explosives. Whoa. You've heard of SPF for sun protection factor, the number that tells us how well sunscreen protects your skin from harmful UVB rays. And you may have also heard from friends or experts online that sunscreens with more than 30 SPF are pointless because they don't really provide any additional protection. So is that true? I mean, if that's the case, why do they even offer an SPF of 60 or 100 anyway? It seems sort of silly. To crack the case, let's start by looking at a curve that shows what percentage of UVB radiation is absorbed by different SPF sunscreens. We can see that an SPF of 1 absorbs 0% of the UV radiation we're exposed to. Hardly worth the effort. Let's jump to SPF 15, the smallest amount of SPF that the American Academy of Dermatology says can protect you from cancer. How good of a job does that do? Oh, wow. An SPF of 15 absorbs a whopping 93.3% of UVB. That's a pretty big difference. Why don't we double that to SPF 30, the most common protection factor in a sunscreen? Now we are absorbing 96.7% an increase of only 4%. The difference is smaller, but it can still be a meaningful difference in protection. Let's double it again to an SPF of 60 and see what happens. This would absorb 98.3% of the UVB, a measly increase of 2%. Uh, okay, thanks, I guess. Once we get to SPF 100, the results are underwhelming. Sure, it's 99% of the UVB rays, but that's less than a 1% increase. Now there's no readily available sunscreen that is going to block 100% of the UV rays. So if we keep going on the SPF curve, the amount of additional photons the sunscreen absorbs would just get smaller and smaller. This is basically a logarithmic curve and it will get closer and closer to 100% without exactly getting there. It's easy to see why people think there isn't much benefit to getting a sunscreen with an SPF above 30 especially if a sunscreen tacks on a lot of additional cost. I have even made this assumption on a past video. But then I read a review of New Concepts and Controversies by Dr. Danielle Yeager and Dr. Henry Lim and realized there is another way to look at things. So let's flip the whole thing upside down. Instead of focusing on how much UVB is absorbed, let's focus on the photons that actually get transmitted through skin. That's the stuff that actually causes the damage after all, the UVB that gets past the sunscreen. To make it easy to understand, let's imagine you have a bucket filled with 60 photons, these little particles of light. When you pour them on your skin, how many of those photons will get through the sunscreen to cause damage? Here's what our graph starts to look like. Now pay attention to the number of photons. We already know that SPF 1 is useless, letting all 60 photons through. A sunscreen with an SPF of 50 lets four whole photons through out of 60. By the time we get to SPF 30, we notice a trend. Only two photons get through, which is half as much. And when we go all the way up to 60, only one photon gets through from our original 60. Said another way, you're getting two times as much skin damage every time you have the SPF. When you look at it that way, it does make sense to use higher SPF values. Sun damage is cumulative, so avoiding those extra photons is probably a good thing. Here we were talking about only 60 photons, but in real life you are bombarded by trillions of these little buggers every second. So that extra protection becomes real meaningful real fast. This is tremendously interesting because as of February 2019, the FDA has proposed a new rule that would limit the labeled SPF on bottles to 60 plus, no matter how high the measured SPF actually is. Now I wonder if that's really a good thing. Of course, this curve is a bit too perfect. In the real world, other things also affect your actual protection factor. Sunscreen washes off, rubs off, and some of the UV filters degrade over time. And we haven't even talked about UVA radiation. More on that coming soon. If you got any questions, put them down below and I'll see you next week.
Also, if you like the information that I share and you want to write it down, support this channel by buying this notebook. It's got gridded pages and can be used for anything from lab notes to things that inspire you.